Salutations and best wishes to you. My name is C. M. Weller and I write books. Following is an excerpt from one of my novels. Heaven's Rebel by C. M. Weller Sarah was on the opposite side of the station to all processing when it blew up. She, like all the other tunnel rats, closed her hands over her ears and stayed rigidly stopped still until the echoes died down. Alarms, shrill and piping to human ears, were still filling the air with their near musical noise. She knew what to do, follow procedure, and maybe nobody would get hurt. No smoke in the air, good. She had to take herself and as many other tunnel rats to the nearest checkpoint. Sarah reoriented herself and hollered, Ali Ali Oxen Free! at the top of her lungs. Human code for come out of hiding and follow me, I know the way. Important things had to be communicated quickly or they wouldn't be communicated at all. Zara crawled, slow and patient, hollering, Ali Ali Oxen Free! at every tunnel scene. Those following her, big or small, joined the chorus once they were on her tail. Once out, they lined up with their carts, disconnected from their body harnesses, neatly by their left sides, sitting down with their ankles tucked under their bottoms and their hands on their heads. They had to remain that way until a supervisor got to them and told them what to do. Disobedient slaves got shot. Sarah was starting to get pins and needles in her hands and feet when a supervisor turned up. She knew better than to look at them. Looking was a sign of aggression. Well, two dozen little rats all lined up in neat rows, said the supervisor. Their boots stopped roughly in the middle of the area where they were all parked. Who led you to this place? Sarah felt more than saw the forest of hands pointing towards her. She tentatively raised her clumsy hand to don't shoot position just past the top of her hair. Stand, animal. Sarah stood, still with her clumsy hand just above her head still with her eyes firmly on the supervisor's boots. Report. Sara was still not very good at the language of her masters. It was easier to speak Creole, but the masters never liked things to be done easy. In order to refrain from arms and other rude noises, she spoke slowly. The explosion after Follow orders, me. Some of the older ones were trying not to laugh. She tightened her better hand into her hair and did her best to keep the clumsy hand raised, even though it shook. Shout out, me. Go to save me. Wait, me. Some of the not so older ones were try also trying not to laugh. Sara felt her face fill with even more heat. Hands down, animals. Sarah was glad to drop hers, but she didn't sit. Even the sponge brains knew to only do what was told. You, ugly yellow hair, come to the front. Sarah picked her way to the front, kept her fingers knotted together and her gaze down to boots. Look up at me. The supervisor said it in perfect Creole. Sarah began quietly crying. I'm sorry, Mama. Here I come, God. Inch by careful inch, Sarah's view climbed up the supervisor, past the funny ankle of all the masters, past the real knees of the twitching tail, up past the belt and the ammo, up past the merits and medals, and the weapon in the grip of one casual set of claws, past the collar and finally to her face. Males had a crest of spikes, 
The females occasionally dyed some of their scales interesting colours. This one did not. Report again in your own language, said the supervisor. Sarah tried not to panic. Keep to the facts as she knew them. Tried not to trip over her own rebellious tongue. She failed the last one. Something done exploded and after it were over I caught and made my way to the closest chicken plant and sat myself down. Well, giggles escaped a few of the sitters. The supervisor's empty claws poked her in the ribs, squeezed her arm and finally turned Sarah's head this way and that. Always thought the really pale ones were dangerously inbred. She murmured. She hissed between her pointy teeth, a noise of disappointment. Gather your carts, all of you. Line up and follow me to the way station. Sarah dashed through the smirks and giggles of the other tunnel rats and scooped up her cart. Someone had filched a few things off the top while the supervisor had been busy with her. Soon enough, if Sarah knew the patterns like she thought she knew the patterns, the cough calls would begin. <coughs> no, I ain't, thought Sarah. I just ain't good at showing I ain't. She did her best to keep her eyes on the tunnel rat in front of her and her feet clear of those who were hell-bent on making her look worse in front of God and everybody. Zara never looked at the elderly male who sorted and weighed her haul. She never saw the one who roughly pressed her better hand into the cleaner grubs and then onto the palm reader. And after that, it was up to her to take off the harness and hang it on a hook, then take off her clothes and run herself through the cattle scrubber. All her fellow rats ignored her now. Shrieking and cavorting through the cold sprays of soap and chemicals and recycled water, Sarah did her best to scratch the dirt off as the conveyor belt took her from one end to the other. Mama always said, we may be low, but we know how to stay clean. Sarah picked up a fresh sheath at the other end, struggling into the itchy, cheap fabric that had been washed a billion and forever times and had never once lost its bite, suffered through the rough handling of another supervisor as they checked her hair for crawlers, and then lining up against the wall while the very bored supervisor scanned their faces before sending them all to quarters. They all marched in neat lines until they were in the areas where only the slaves went. And then it was a mad tangle of arms and legs and shrieking bodies as they ran for their homes. Sarah was not the fastest, not by ages. There was never enough food to go around and the babies got in first and the elders got it next and by the time it got to those in the middle, the bully got the bigger share but at least it was good to be home. Mama was mending clothes and didn't even bother to look up at Sarah's I'm home. Three of the elders were trying to make the info station work again on bits and bobs and sneaked parts that could have been worth their lives if they'd gotten caught. A cluster of girls were playing with each other's hair and Darwin was leaning against the wall near Sarah's favorite sleep nook. Where you been, Sponge Brain? Working. Ooh, claw marks. Darwin poked them. Sarah didn't even bother showing pain. They fear you up. Must have decided you're too scrawny to eat. Too hard to love to eat all kinds of rat. Hey, said one of the four fixing the info station. You call on the masters or else they eat you. They got eyes and ears everywhere. Show respect. Sarah clambered into one of the little spaces she knew where Darwin couldn't poke and quietly worried if anyone would notice if she wound up gone for good. Between seven older sibs, five younger ones, and this year's papa, Sarah wondered if she could just run off and live on her own for a change. Except, she
she had no idea how to do it.